Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. I am thrilled because we have many wonderful people in the Bronx, people who do good things, people who share. And I don't know if I've ever met somebody who does so much individually to help other people. Uh, she has uh, created an organization called Giving Friends, and what could be better than that? And uh, let's say uh, good evening to Lynn Corey. Nice to have you with us, Lynn. Thank you so much for having me today. Lynn, um, th tell me the story. You tell us the story. You uh, related um, your personal story to me a little bit. How did you arrive and you went a long way to get there at Giving Friends? Yeah, it's been a real magical journey. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, 27 years ago, um, I had found myself in a really dark place, um, living on the streets of New York City, um, homeless, addicted to drugs, alcohol, and um, I had just had my young son and I sought help and I sought help at a very um, unique uh, program, a mother and child recovery based uh, a housing uh, program that started my journey um, on recovery and to um, have a better life and learn how to be a sober mother. And while I was there, it was um it was you know it was it was a tough place to be and we had nothing and um, I had made a commitment early on from the very beginning of my recovery that if I could get my act together I was going to come back every year and deliver gifts uh, to the children living at this facility and the moms and so far we've been able to keep that commitment as we approach our twenty seventh year of returning to that facility. But along the way, where, where is that facility? Just so we it's, can, it's in Upper Manhattan. Okay. It's um, it used to be called, uh, it used to be run by another organization. Now it's currently under the Samaritan Daytop Village umbrella. Right. Okay, and they are a big supporter and partner of all the work that we do. And so we have returned every year to be able to deliver holiday items to these uh, women in recovery that had similar. Um, you know, struggles to get into a facility like this, whether they came in through children's services or criminal court or um, independent, whatever their circumstances were, we were there to encourage them and to show them that there is life after the streets of New York, that you can have a better life. And we try and recruit them along the way to see if they want to come and help our Giving Friends mission, which we absolutely embrace that opportunity. You, you know, what's interesting to me is you started out by saying the difficulties you, you had, you were on the streets and you were addicted and you were drinking and all the other things. Um, and then you said, well, then I went to this organization and, and then I decided, etc. That transformation must have been much more difficult than you just gave it credit for in other words you said well okay then i decided that i was good yes. but but let, let's just identify right. that transition because that's a very important lesson for many people yes. who are in similar circumstances yeah. and how do they get to that point to okay. make that transition thank you so much gary for you know um identifying that that was um, being a mom for me was the pivotal moment for me to go from, you know, from the dark into the light, if you will. Right. Um, and like um, an old song says, um, you know, up from the up from the ashes come the roses of success. And until you're beat down and until you're able to really say enough is enough, uh, the road to recovery is not even visible. And for me, it was when I became a mom, like it was okay for me to completely destroy my life. That was okay. And it was easy. And the streets called me into that game and I spiraled out. But when I became a mom, that's when things changed for me. And I knew that this child deserved a chance and getting sober is hard. You know, uh, but that, that's why I brought that up. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't want to just say, oh, yeah. OK, so then I decided that I right. would be a yeah, drug addict. switch and, and life got good. Yeah, it wasn't it, it's not that pretty. It doesn't work but, that way. Yeah. But, um, you know, getting sober is tough. It's not easy and yeah. finding the right place and at the right time. And but getting sober with a child is even worse because yeah. you see you're causing the child issues. The other thing, the other element, and then we're going to talk about all the giving that you do. Yes. 
other element um, that's in there is you need the support system. And you talked about an organization that helped you. There are many recovery organizations. If anybody needs you, welcome to contact me personally. I know a couple of them. I'd be happy to recommend those kinds of things. I'm guessing if you were to contact Lynn, Please. she probably would also say, look, we want to help. And we're going to show you. Out. Please reach and, out. and you would incorporate them in the giving process, right? 100%. So, so, so now, how did we, well, we've already done how did, but you've gone from just doing those things and giving out to a full organization that gives to thousands, I think, what was the number, 10,000 people you gave uh, over? Last year, we reached over 30,000 families. 30,000 people. I, I, I would stand up and applaud. I know it's remarkable, and 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 it's um it's nothing that I did. It's something that we did collectively, and that's why it was so easy. When after all the years of just volunteerism and and delivering and wrapping and <clears throat> um, high school students and elementary <clears throat> um you know friends, they would come to our kitchen table and wrap gifts and collect through through the schools and then the sports teams and then the colleges and then when they were home for but after all these years of just volunteering volunteering um you know we were asked to try and widen the net and deliver to um other everywhere run yeah, by everywhere yeah, yeah. Anywhere. so um, like, and, after and, i got and, up off the floor i said sure let's give it a shot and, and, and you know what else uh, which i like and we're going to show this video that you had sent us what i like is other people responded because they understood the need. Now, maybe they didn't come exactly. through the travails that you went through, yeah. but they decided to that this was something that we all can do to, to get our arms around yeah. each other. So I want to show this video, um, which you presented to us, which really shows, illustrates exactly what it is you do. I, I thought it was interesting that you're barely in the video. I mean, you're seen a couple of times, but all the other people speak in it. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, here we are, Giving Friends. Giving Friends is a magical, beautiful nonprofit. It's the little engine that could. Anytime we hear of something, Lynn is right there. If there's a fire in the neighborhood, she'll pack up stuff and we'll bring it there. If they need coats, we'll bring it there. We help the community, we help people who are in need, and try to at least bring like a smile on kids' faces. We worked with Lynn on putting together packages for the immigrant children that were being bused here without parents in some circumstances. And Lynn, in literally seconds, put together packages that children would need and things for the parents too. People in need due to substance abuse, domestic violence, poverty, or just a sudden crisis deserve a helping hand as they strive to build a better life for themselves. They deserve to be treated with dignity. The one thing that I love about being a part of Giving Friends is the respect in which we handle the giving. We make sure we add special touches to make a person feel special. It's my respect to someone else. One of the really beautiful things about what Lynn does is she gives gifts to the parents so that they can in turn give the gift to the children so that magical relationship stays. In 2022, we delivered smiles to an estimated 10,000 families. Sometimes it's toothbrushes and toothpaste, and sometimes it's stuffed animals, and sometimes it's home goods, but really it's donations. We help families only with the help of our generous donors and our generous volunteers. I can see that my contribution is changing lives for the better. Thank you for being a friend. All right, there we go. Congratulations. I'm so proud of our work. It's like I'm, I'm sitting here crying. Like, this is. Oh, sweet. aren't you sweet? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Where do you get all this stuff? I mean, in other words, it looks like there's, you know, it, it's not like somebody just gave a can of food, but you get like a lot of stuff. Where do you get all that? <laughs> it's very hard to say no to Lynn Corey. So, uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. So, we, um, through, through just years of growth, um, uh, I had served on a parents advisory board for the Partnership for a Drug-Free America. Um, I met some folks there, Jim Siegel, uh, who 
uh, we sat on a few boards together, who is now one of our board members. Uh, one, one friendship, one connection led to another. Somebody was the executive director at the Toy Foundation. We, we got um, recognized by them. We are the recipient of many of their local toy shows. We were on panels for the uh, International uh, Toy Show at the Jacob Javits Center last year. We're gonna be getting more stuff from them again this year. Uh, so we, we've made so many connections to get uh, donations through partners through that connection. Then we have reached out to other like national nonprofits, Baby to Baby is a big sponsor and partner of ours. Wow. We've local companies that have made uh, incredible um, uh, funding donations to us. We just recently uh, got a grant to purchase a uh, brand new van, the Giving Bus. Oh yes, you had mentioned that to me. I'm sorry, oh, I didn't ask you story. about that. Oh, the bus story. The bus so story. we, yeah, oh, this is really special and we're, it's it's emotional for me. So just um, so we had been seeking out a new van because we're driving around in a, a van literally where like the wheels are falling off, right? And um, we had been asking folks for help for this. We've been campaigning for this for quite some time. And a friend of ours, um, Lorraine, is um, an owner of a local bus company in the Bronx, and. Um, she said, oh, you need a bus. <laughs> and they and they got you a bus. They I, gave I, you a bus. I just want to move it ahead before we um before we run out of time. Um and and so you what what I'm still stuck on, mm -hmm. and now I'm thinking about is that person who was homeless and drug addicted and all those other things. Did you ever realize that you had the administrative skill to figure this because if I was in that circumstance and decided to do giving, I don't know that I could set up an organization like this. You have real skills and the passion goes with it, but did you ever know? And I think that's a lesson for all people in that circumstance, you know? Yeah. So the first time that we were able to give a mother a gift to give to their child while well, they had nothing. The um, the residual effect of that, you know, uh, being part of that and seeing my son grow up and learning how to be kind and generous, it um, it just rejuvenates itself more and more every year. And uh, it's, you just can't stop. I, I mean, I, I really, I realize. Yeah, I realized that you you couldn't uh, answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> that was great because it, it it just happened, and because of your passion and your love for yeah. it, I love the notion that you give the parents the gift so the parents could give it, so that the kids feel like this is my family as opposed to somebody yeah. helping us out. Yeah, We're, like we give because we know what it's like to have nothing, right. and poverty and addiction is not seasonal. People who want to participate and get to you and maybe make a donation or, or be a volunteer, how do they do that? Uh, you can reach out to us on our website, givingfriends.org. You can email uh, me directly at info at givingfriends.org. Uh, follow us on our socials. Um, all Everything is on our website. We're very easy to, to contact. We're not hard to find. And if we have it, you have it. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? Lynn, ladies and gentlemen, Lynn Corey um, is doing great stuff. And here's here's the thing that I know. She's not going to stop. No. So it doesn't matter what you say or what you think. This is what she does. And she sees the goodness in, in all the people around her. And sharing that is 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 the maybe the biggest gift of all. Um, so, Lynn, thank you so much. Stay on right afterwards. I have an idea for you. That okay, very good. Thank you so much. Okay. And, folks, uh, that'll do it. Um, we thank E.T. and congratulate her for being the new editor of the Riverdale Press. And, of course, Lynn for taking care of all of us. And, uh, you know, if the curtain don't fall and the creek don't rise, yes, we'll be back next week. Goodbye.